Hey folks, welcome to this look at one of the features in Worldographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program, and uh, what you see here is a randomly generated map. Uh, we went and just uh, went to File, New World Kingdom Map, and generated one, um, and then we added the kingdom information by going up here to Generate Nations and Empires, and um, got basically this except for switching uh, moving a couple of labels off of the cities. Then uh, I kind of uh, pre-did what we're going to do here a little bit. Uh, this is just showing you um, how to use the feature decorations um, for kind of setting up a, a war game out of it or um, a skirmish game or if your players in a role-playing game campaign get so significantly high level uh, you can use this then to, to track the armies um, if they're kind of leading the armies or leading the kingdoms or, or so forth. Um, and so we've got a, a number of silhouettes here. Uh, we, in this case, we picked the, a couple of dragons and a couple of soldiers where this uh, nation, Jingjing, is uh, attacking and trying to take over Stutten. Um, and so we've, we've, we've done that. So uh, how do you do that? How do you get the, these icons here? Um, so these are just other features on the feature store with some additional um, things added in. Um, so um, in order to find the ones that you want, you can type in. These are built in. Of course, you can add your own images as well. But if we wanted to put on there another dragon force, we can select the dragon by just uh, narrowing down our filter to find it quickly. And then you can override the color. So um, right now we've got this gold color. Um, and then what you would do is if you scroll down further, down here in the bottom are the feature decorations. And I'll show you what these were here for originally, but this is a great purpose for them as well. And I can denote um, in each corner what, uh, you know, some values about those forces. Maybe the upper left-hand corner is an attack value, and uh, the upper uh, right-hand corner might be a defense value. Lower uh, lower left, uh, I was thinking, is number of units, you know, if they're stacked up, you know, so I've got, you know, 10 of these or 5 of these here or 2 or whatever. And then the last one might be a movement, you know, how many, how many hexes do they move per turn, for example, or something along those lines. So how do you do that? Well, you check these boxes on. So we've got them checked on. Then I put in the number, you know, so these are, you want to keep these to generally just one or two characters. If you put too many there, I mean, you could, especially on the bottom or the top, you could put several. Um, so if you did have something, uh, in fact, let's do that. Let's um, let's put down here um, CMDR for commander. Okay, now that that's since these are designed to only be for one or two characters, you're not going to see all of that. Um, and then likewise, this is very tight here, so we don't have the um, we're not able to see the full clock position, but we position these based on the clock positions. So to show up on the bottom, we're going to pick the 6 o'clock position. And then here, we're going to give it the color maroon, so it's like the others. And, um, you know, uh, in this case, though, since uh, we've got a dragon, uh, the dragon's attack value is much higher. So, um, but it's the commander. Um, so the other ones have an attack value of 5. This guy's got six. The defense value, we'll make the defense value still the same. Um, there's only one of them, though, instead of multiple. And yes, like the other dragons, he can move five. Um, and then we just uh, place where we want them. So we want them here. Nope, oh, but we picked the wrong color. So we put, well, <laughs> maybe the commander's behind enemy lines. Maybe he's been captured. Maybe he's on a secret mission, but that's easy to change. We just go in here to select. Um, so if we turn off the override color, then we're just going to get the black default. Um, but if we turn it back on, and then we can pick the magenta color here, and then deselect it. And that's how we get that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more there so you can see, get a really good look at it. Um, so yeah, we've got a number of these uh, creatures that are built in. Uh, the dragon is probably the most interesting. I mean, you could have some, uh, well, for mounted units, I think that we have a um, knight, maybe. 
Yeah, okay, so we have a horseback kind of rider. Um, so if he wanted to have something like this, um, and maybe he is on the other side. So he's on the olive brown side, and his attack value is probably better than the soldiers by a little bit, and his defense value, we'll say, is, is, is better as well. Um, we'll say that there's a stack of five of them here. His movement is two instead of one, not the commander. So actually we can just uncheck this and we can place this here. And that's also got a checkbox set to remove the background, the, the color, the icon of the terrain here with this hide terrain icon checkbox on. Just makes it a little bit more readable um, when it's there. So uh, that's how you can do this. Um, now, as I said, these were originally uh, used as part of something else. This is for originally for our cosmic maps to do something what Traveler does. And we'll just generate one of those just to show what they're all about. Um, and then we're going to zoom in so you can better see what these are. Um, so I can select any of these guys here. Um, let's pick one that has an extra thing to it. So there's this planet. Uh, or this system, I should say. And in this case, it's got a C on the top, and it's got a, a uh, diamond there, uh, which in um, Traveler denotes, you know, the class of the star system that it is. And these little diamonds and, and other symbols around the edges just denote uh, if they have a star base and what type of star base it is or what kind of repair facilities are there, that sort of thing. Is something that you can uh, encapsulate there with that. Um, and in this case, there's also a label added on the bottom. So instead of using the 6 o'clock position um, for some other values, in this case, it um, uses a label here. Uh, this label is set um, via this text field here. So that's a quick look at what uh, Worldographer will do to support uh, kind of showing units on, on, a, on a board. You could also use these also for battle tech, for example, is another way that I envision and, and have used it in the past, um, where you might use some of our uh, larger battle mat type uh, terrain that we have in, in the tool. Like uh, if I do tree or forest, yeah, tree. So I've got these tree icons and tree clusters that are reminiscent of what's on the original Battletech maps, um, as well as some mountain things as well with some shading and shadow effects to them. Uh, so you could uh, likewise do some sort of a, 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 another skirmish war game type thing using those values. Um, and that's what Worldographer will do for you out of the box. And of course, you're, you're free to add other icons into the tool up here on the configure menu. You can add custom terrain, features, textures. You can also use our configuration folder stuff. Um, you can go to the configure menus uh, to, to pull, pull those in as well. But to keep this short, look for other videos for that. Anyway, uh, thanks for your attention and I hope you're able to make some uh, great maps with the tool.